Documentation is an integral part of the profession of nursing. It is not separate from care, and it is not optional. So the purpose of this presentation today is to discuss the expectations for documentation within the context of any nursing practice setting. To begin this presentation, let's take a few moments to reflect on the following statements. As a registered nurse, I must be able to say that I maintain timely and accurate documentation. What does this mean to you? I know that documentation is a part of the care I provide. Do you document all aspects of the nursing process? I know that documentation is not optional. And I understand the client's record is a legal document. And we will expand, or I will expand on this um, concept throughout the presentation. But I will leave you with just one statement on that is that if something is not documented, it's not done. So we must be able to say, as registered nurses, that I re am replying with confidence to each of these statements. And if you are, in sh are unsure or not confident in your response to these statements, I hope today's presentation would help you to answer these statements with greater confidence. This slide displays the standards of practice for registered nurses and nurse practitioners. The authority to develop, maintain, and promote standards for nursing practice is legislated in the Registered Nurses Act. And as a self-regulated profession, you must be able to say that you hold yourself accountable to the standards, which are the expectations for nursing practice. So standard uh, one to four on this wheel apply to both registered nurses and nurse practitioners. And standards five to seven apply only to nurse practitioners. So what exactly are standards? And standards are broad, authoritative, principle-based statements. They provide a legal reference for reasonable, prudent nursing practice. They protect the public by supporting safe, competent, compassionate, and ethical nursing care. And they apply to all RNs in all domains and all practice settings. So standard one, I'm just going to go back. Oh, standard one of the standards, obviously, is responsibility and accountability. So exactly what does it mean to be accountable? And accountability means that we are answerable for what we do, for how well we do it, for what we decide not to do, and it means that we are answerable to our clients, our employer, answerable to legislation, to working in our own scope of practice, and knowing the scope of practice of others. So therefore, we are accountable for everything that we do, for the things that we don't do, for our actions, for our inactions. And therefore, we are accountable for what we document. And standard two, which is knowledge-based practice, references are specific to documentation. And indicator 2.7, which states that we maintain accurate and timely documentation, including written and or electronic. And remember, the standards of practice are the minimal expectations that's expected of you as a registered nurse. And therefore, documentation is a must-do. Like I said, it's at indicator 2.7, which is under standard two, knowledge-based practice. So it's a must-do. 
The documentation is defined as written or electronically generated client information obtained through the nursing process. And it is through documentation that RNs communicate observations, decisions, actions, and outcomes. And the basic principles and expectations for quality documentation, both written and electronic, are the same with the exception that electronic documentation does pose a greater risk as it carries a high uh, risk of breach of confidentiality. So therefore, we must be familiar with the policies and procedures that exist to protect the confidentiality of the patient's health record and the system. In addition, with electronic documentation, you must also know how to use the system. As we know, there are various uh, software applications, various documentation systems. However, you are responsible to ensure that you are educated to use the various applications so that you can follow the, the basic principles of documentation, regardless of the system or software application that you use in your employment setting. Documentation is required for all aspects of the nursing process. So you must document assessment, nursing diagnosis, planning, implementation, and evaluation. So all of these aspects must be documented. And regardless of the method used to deliver care, for example, if you're doing virtual or in person, this applies. But it's also important to remember, if you are using virtual methods, let's say only for assessment, so you cannot, you know, you're not seeing the uh, client, um, you know, face-to-face -face per se, you're using a virtual method, documentation um, of an assessment should be expensive. And as we know, documentation is a part of care. It is not additional to care. The RN should also document all client transition points. For example, admission, discharge, transfer, or transport. The documentation should reflect what information was provided to prepare the client for any of these transitions. The documentation should also include the client's status at the time, the education provided, whether that is verbal and written, the arrangements for follow-up, any evidence of the client's understanding, and if there was family uh, involvement in those uh, transition points. It is also important to document all significant client-related communications with other healthcare professionals, whether that be uh, written, electronic, verbal, and unsuccessful attempts. We should ensure that we document the date and time that contact was made, the information that was provided during that communication, and the response received from the other healthcare professional. For example, uh, just documenting that the physician is aware or that the charge nurse was notified with any names or any action does not meet quality documentation. It's also important to remember that if that communication was unsuccessful, uh, you, it's very important to document information about any alternate channels that you pursued to ensure that the client's care needs or services were met. So like I say, uh, just documenting you know, a physician notified um, and you do not document um, that, uh, you know, you, uh, the physician called you back or you had a further conversation with the physician or what the physician was notified does not meet quality documentation. It is also important to be uh, aware of employer policies surrounding electronic authorized practice. For example, the use of emails uh, and mobile device uses to communicate with other healthcare professionals.
Documentation should also be factual, objective, and accurate. We must use objective terminology when describing observations. For example, if you walked into a room and found the patient on the floor, document patient found on floor instead of patient fell. Because truly, we don't know that the patient fell. We do know that you found them on the floor. So we need to be very specific and factual. We should document statements or feedback from others by indicating what was stated and by whom. And you can use quotation marks uh, to identify those direct quotes. Be precise in your documentation. The use of words such as appears, seems, or apparently demonstrate uncertainty. And use only the abbreviations, the symbols, and the acronyms uh, articulated by your employer as acceptable. Any mistaken uh, entries or errors uh, in your documentation must be corrected according to your employer policy. So for example, uh, the content in question, so the, the content that you are uh, correcting should remain clearly visible and retrievable and provide evidence that a correction was made. So for example, to, you can correct an error if you are um, you know, handwriting uh, by drawing a line through the word and in, then insert your initials and the date and the time. So by drawing that uh, line through um, the words, you can still see what was actually written. So that what it, that's what it means by the content in question should remain clearly visible and retrievable um, if there was an audit done of the chart or that information was um, analyzed. It's very important not to leave any blank spaces. Uh, this must, might provide an opportunity for uh, others to add information that's unknown to uh, the original author. Ensure you have accurate spelling and legibility, as in misspelled words or any eligible entries uh, could result in misinterpretation information and could lead to an adverse event. And validate you have the correct client record. So you do not want to be documenting um, in the wrong uh, chart, in the wrong client record. So ensure that every page of the health record uh, must contain the uh, correct client identifiers. Um, and um, that is whether it's you know, in an actual physical uh, chart, a paper chart, or if that is in an electronic health record, uh, you must ensure that um, you have the correct client by ensuring you know you have the uh, correct client identifiers uh, available on that screen. You should also be cautious surrounding the use of copy and paste functions in an electronic health record, as this may result in inaccurate, outdated, or incomplete information, and again lead to errors or adverse events. So if you are copying and pasting um, information over and over, um, it, it, that information may have been correct at that point in time when it was originally documented. Uh, but as that client, uh, client stay extends in hospital, uh, those details may not be as correct as they once were. And by doing that copy and paste function, that information could uh, certainly be um, not correct anymore, and that is a big risk. I want to provide you here with an example, something to reflect on. So I'm going to read out this scenario, and I want you to think, you know, or consider, does the following example meet the standards of practice in respect to documentation based on what I've highlighted thus far in this presentation? So it's January the 1st, 2021. PT came to emerge, was drunk, and had a large cut on the left side of his head. He never lost consciousness. Has a history of diabetes, 
and some heart problems. Voice was complaining because she was waiting, he was waiting too long to be seen. I paged the doctor and he never answered. Dry dressing applied to heads. Waiting for doctor to see patient. And it's Pam RN. So we're going to work down through this example with a few questions. So what is the employer policy on charting date and time? Is it, you know, uh, day, month, year? So what exactly is the employer's policy? And in this example, where is the time? Uh, PT is abbreviated. You know, does that mean patient? We're making an assumption. Um, emerge, E-M-E-R-G, again, it's abbreviated, which leads to assumptions. The use of the word uh, drunk is biased. The words large cut uh, on the left side of his head is not descriptive or objective. And where exactly is the cut on the left side of this patient's head? The statement, he never lost consciousness. What exactly does that mean? How do we define that? You know, how is that, what evidence is to support the fact that he never lost consciousness? The statement, specific heart problems. Again, what exactly does that mean? The wife comments uh, surrounding the fact she's been uh, complaining that he was waiting too long to be seen um, is kind of irrelevant to this patient's care. And Paige, the doctor. So what doctor was Paige? Um, and he never answers. Uh, did the nurse uh, try to page him again? Uh, what exactly, what other action was taken? Or was she just waiting to see? he or she waiting to see if somebody was going to call back. Dry dressing applied to the head. Again, it's a dry dressing, but where was it applied to the head? And um, the word patron is spelled wrong. All right. And then we have a lot of white space, and then Pam, RN, and Pam who? Now I'll follow up with just another example. So this one states October 21st, 2019 at 1610. PT's temperature up and plus plus drainage from abdominal wound. Patient C slash O, CP earlier on this shift, but settled now. PT ordered five to 10 milligrams of morphine, sub Q every four PRN, and meds given for pain. Doctor texted for further direction regarding temperature. Incentive spirometer given to patient. Wife visiting, IV infusing well. No further problems. Notice spending a good day. And then we have our dotted lines, S. Lewis, R. N. So again, we have P, T um, is abbreviated. Plus, plus plus drainage. So what exactly is plus, plus, plus? All right. And what type of drainage are we referring to? And it says it's from uh, the abdominal wound. And then patient C slash O. Again, what does C slash O uh, mean? So that's an abbreviation, again, leading to assumption. And CP, what does that mean? That's an abbreviation, I'm assuming that is chest pain, but again, we should never assume. Uh, PT, again, abbreviation, uh, ordered five to 10 milligrams of morphine, sub-Q every four, every four what? Is that hours? And the mids were given for pain. So pain for, like what pain? Because as the patient was complaining of CP pain earlier on, but settled now, but yet they were given mids. So for what pain? The doctor texted for further directions regarding temperature, but we know that the temperature is up. But what does temperature up mean? All right. Um, wife is visiting. Again, it's uh, it kind of irrelevant to the patient's care. 
IV infusing well. So where is the IV? What location? What type of IV? And what does infusing well mean? No further problems. Note it's spending a good day. So what does spending a good day mean? So after all that, the patient is spending a good day. So those are, are two examples um, of documentation for you to uh, think about and reflect on uh, surrounding the fact, you know, do the examples meet the standards of practice in respect to, you know, quality documentation? We have all heard the term you, or the, the comment, you do it, or you did it, you document it. So RNs are responsible and accountable for documenting the care they provide. And care provided by other professionals is documented by those individuals. So if there are two or more people, um, healthcare providers providing care, the RN assigned as the primary RN is expected to document the assessment, the intervention, and the client response while noting the role of other healthcare providers. And then the uh, second assignment or the second RN is expected to review the notes of the, um, of the previous RN, add any details uh, when necessary, and then sometimes it may be necessary for both uh, RNs to document, uh, to reflect different assessments. So if I review, um, you know, my, uh, the coworker's uh, notes and the assessment that he or she, they did, um, and uh, I have uh, a completely different assessment, I make my note of my assessment. There are also situations when a signature um, is required for, let's say, discarding of a narcotic uh, or client identification for a blood transfusion. Um, and if we are um, signing or giving our signature, obviously, uh, in these situations, this implies shared accountability. So it's very important um, that if I am signing my name, in these situations that I actually witnessed or participated in that event before adding my signature because my signature implies shared accountability and it implies that I did indeed witness you uh, discard that narcotic or um, I did uh, participate in that client identification. There are also situations where uh, designated recorders may be identified. Uh, for example, during a code blue or in an operating room. And in these situations, the care provider is unable to document the event as it occurs. So therefore, the, there is a recorder that's designated to record everything that is uh, occurring, so all the care that's provided. Um, However, as I indicated, that this is only in select circumstances, and you should be familiar with the uh, policies in uh, your organization by your employer surrounding these select circumstances and the documentation. And in these situations, uh, it's very important to include in the, rec in the health record a list of all uh, who were present um, in the room during that uh, event, for example, during uh, the code blue uh, or who was in the room, in the operating room at that time. Students are expected to document the care they provide in accordance with employer and academic policies. And the co-assigned RN is to record their own assessments interventions and evaluations. So um, as a registered nurse, if you are signing notes that are written by students, you are adding uh, a level of accountability, all right? So if you are signing that student's note, you are saying that I agree with exactly everything that is written by this student. This student. I, my eyes have seen everything this student is describing. So it's just it's something to think about uh, if you are signing notes written by students. There is really there is no need um, because you, as that co-assigned RN, 
you are uh, responsible to record your own assessment, interventions, and evaluation as you are assigned to that specific client. So remember, if, if you did it, you document it. So when should documentation occur? And documentation should occur at the time the care or service was provided or as soon as possible. And documenting as close as possible to the time of care enhances the accuracy and the overall credibility of the health record. Documentation should never occur prior to the care or service being provided. Documentation should be chronological. And again, and again, this enhances the clarity of the communication and enables other healthcare professionals to identify the care that was provided, any changing patterns in the client's health status, and then the outcomes or evaluations of that care. There may be situations where it's not possible to document at the time of or within a reasonable period following an event and therefore a late entry is required. Again, it's very important to know your employer, employer's policy surrounding a late entry. But if you are completing a late entry, you should include the date and time of the late entry, as well as the date and time of when that care or intervention was provided. And then in the event of a lost entry, for example, if there was a computer uh, malfunction, the RN may be, may be required to reconstruct a new entry. So the new entry must clearly indicate the information recorded is a replacement for a lost entry. And if the care or event cannot be recalled, the new entry should state that the information for the specific time of the event has been lost. Because if you uh, can recall and you document nothing, it looks like, you know, of course, nothing was done during that time period. It's not documented, it's not done. Um, however, like I said, if you cannot recall it, uh, you do still need to uh, make a note indicating that it cannot be recalled and, and like, stating it as such. So that, again, uh, if there was an uh, analysis done of your documentation, um, it, it would show a clear picture of what actually occurred um, in that situation. When, so when, again, should documentation occur? And frequent documentation supports accuracy. And the frequency and, and amount of detail required in documentation is dictated by several factors including the complexity of a client's health status, changes in a care plan, the degree to which a client's condition puts the client at risk, the degree of risk involved in a treatment or a component of care, and also according to employer policy. And the frequency of documentation is particularly important when precise assessment is required because of that change in the client's uh, condition or health status. It's also very important to document frequently um, when um, you have you know, multiple clients, there is um, a, a lot happening, there is, you know, complexity is increasing, there's a lot of changes. And um, because of everything that is happening around you and in that environment, you know, documenting uh, frequently and, um, and a large amount of detail uh, will ensure that you remember the details and the care you provide as it is happening. Um, and if not, if you wait a little period of time, things will become clear, uh, cloudy uh, surrounding those multiple patients and the uh, events that are occurring.
As RNs, we have a role in safeguarding the privacy, the security, and the confidentiality of a client's health record. And in electronic documentation, access is controlled using passwords and or other access requirements. Therefore, it's imperative for you to maintain the security of your user password and to use other safeguards, such as logging off. And it is also uh, important in maintaining uh, the client's privacy and confidentiality for you to be familiar with the Personal Health Information Act. Because in some situations, uh, depending on uh, your setting and your environment, you may be a custodian of personal health information, and therefore, you are subject to requirements under the Personal Health Information Act. So therefore, um, if you're not familiar with this act, uh, please become familiar um, with this piece of legislation. Remember, only information relevant to the care of the client is documented in the client's health record. So in the example uh, I used uh, previously, uh, there were comments there surrounding the fact that the wife visited, or the other example was that the wife was complaining that uh, the pay, uh, her husband was waiting too long to be seen, okay? Um, so that's an example of where that is not required in that client's chart uh, because we only need information that is relevant to the care of the client, that is specific to that specific client. Right? In addition, quality improvement, risk management, and occurrence or safety reporting are separate and distinct from the client's health record and are captured according to employer policy. Okay? They are separate from the client's health record. Uh, it's not to, uh, the client's health record is not to the location um, to uh, document, document that specific information. And as our ends, we must comply with pro uh, professional duty to report and uh, in accordance with legislation. So the following are two examples of legislation with a requirement uh, for reporting. For example, the Public Health Protection and Promotion Act and the Gunshot and Stab Wound Reporting Act are two pieces of legislation um, that we have a professional uh, duty to report um, um, and document, a complete specific documentation. And again, it's very important to become familiar with these pieces of legislation um, and uh, how um, you are to complete the documentation that's required uh, in these uh, pieces of legislation. And always remember that critical and defensible documentation is accurate and complete is factual and objective, is chronological, is permanent and legible, is contemporaneous, and is in full English language, is not in text speak. Very important points to uh, remember when we are documenting. And then what does uh, this slide uh, represent? Do you think it meets our you know, quality documentation? And essentially, it means that if it's not documented, it's not done. So if, if uh, you don't document the care that you provide, it indicates and shows that nothing was done. This is not the kind of uh, slide or an example of documentation um, that you would want to see in uh, a client's chart. We have various resources um, at the college to um, assist you with documentation and achieving quality documentation. And we do currently have a document called Documentation Standards for Registered Nurses that is available on our website under um, our document library. 
we do have a, a new documentation uh, document uh, to guide your practice uh, coming in the very near future. Um, and you may be selected uh, to provide us with feedback um, on that document. So stay tuned and um, for an updated uh, version to support your practice on documentation.